The city of Kemland has been bombed. Here is UR Dalton for more on the story. Today we have Dr. Fusion with us. He majors in nuclear chemistry from Harvard University. He's here to explain to us about the bombing of Kemland. Hello, Dr. Fusion. How are you today? Very good. How are you? I'm doing great. So, what is your reaction to the bombing of Kemland? I don't want to get into the political issues because I'm only a scientist. And as a scientist, I believe it is too cruel to use fission bombs, also better known as atomic bombs, due to their devastating effects. So, what is exactly so devastating about an atomic bomb? A small atomic bomb is equivalent to 20,000 tons of TNT. It requires very little actions to create a chain reaction that can devastate anything around it. Here is a demonstration of a fission reaction. Hi, I'm Dr. Tuma Stein, the resident computer modeling expert here at Channel 12 News. What you're about to witness is a recreation of a fission reaction. Please keep in mind that this is only a computer-generated model. It is not entirely accurate, but gets the idea across. Firstly, you'll notice this red shape at the bottom here. For right now, we'll call this uranium-235, since it is a common ion used in fission reactions. Also note that the individual pieces of the uranium-235 ions are not subatomic particles, but are supposed to represent segments of an atom breaking apart in a fission reaction. Now one thing you'll notice is a uh, large object moving towards the uranium-235. This is supposed to be a neutron, but would be much smaller relatively. Upon the point of impact with the uranium, you'll see that large amounts of energy are released. This is because the splitting of an atom releases lots of energy, which makes it useful in both warfare and as a power supply, but also it generates a lot of deadly radiation, which makes it a very controversial war weapon of war, and also a very controversial uh, method of producing energy. So what else can the bomb do? It can emit up to three types of radiation. They're alpha, beta, and gamma. Hi, this is Dr. Tumash Dime again here to talk about different forms of radiation and decay. What I'm going to show you now is an example of alpha radiation. Firstly, you'll notice the spinning mass of spheres. This represents polonium-210, an ion known to be a heavy alpha particle emitter. The red spheres represent protons, and the white spheres represent neutrons, while the yellow spheres spinning around the outside of the protons and neutrons are, of course, electrons. One thing to note is that this is entirely not to scale. The electrons are too large and too close to the nucleus, but in order to fit the entire thing on the screen, some sacrifices to accuracy must be taken. Now I'm going to tell the program to initiate an alpha decay. Okay, what you see here is two protons and two neutrons whizzing away from the atom. This is an alpha particle or a helium plus two ion. This form of radiation is actually not too dangerous. Because it is a relatively large particle, it can be stopped very easily and can only move at most a foot or two in our atmosphere. The alpha particle cannot even penetrate human skin, making it easy to protect against. The only problem with alpha radiation is that in inhaled or ingested, there isn't any of line of defense to protect cells, and the alpha radiation can cause damage. Okay, so here's an example of beta radiation. Again, here's an atom where the protons are denoted by red, the neutrons by white, and the electrons by yellow. Beta decay takes two forms, beta positive and beta negative. Beta negative describes an electron that escapes the atom. However, while it is exactly the same as an electron in charge and mass, beta particles are formed when a neutron decays to a proton and an electron. This process increases the atomic number of the ion by one while maintaining the same mass. This process is called beta particle emission. Here's an animation of beta decay. You'll see that the, the, an electron is propelled from the nucleus of the atom. Okay, so now we'll reset the model. Now the other form of beta radiation is called beta positive, or positron emission. This occurs when a po proton changes into a neutron and emits a particle with the same mass as, as an electron with a positive charge. The decay decreases the atomic number of the ion but maintains the mass. For the purpose of this model, the positron appears blue. The danger of beta particles is somewhat more of a threat than alpha particles. Beta particles are much smaller than alpha particles and can move fa farther. Beta particles have the ability to move a few meters and have more penetration power. In the case of beta radiation, it is important to be completely enclosed in something such as glass, wood, or even a sealed house. However, like alpha particles, if inhaled or ingested, the effects can be deadly. Gamma radiation is the most dangerous type of radiation. 
It is the direct product of fission and fusion reactions and is actually just high-frequency electromagnetic energy. Gamma radiation has enough penetration power that the only way to protect against it is with several feet of concrete and multiple layers of lead. Gamma radiation has the capability to literally melt living flesh. In this animation, these spheres will represent a living cell. The block in the middle represents a standard wall in any house. Now if we turn on the gamma radiation, you'll notice that the pieces of the cell are getting blown away despite a solid wall between the gamma radiation source in the cell. Again, the only way to truly protect against gamma radiation is with several layers of concrete and lead. With the exception of the initial blast, the gamma waves are the most deadly product of nuclear bombs, mainly because they travel much farther than the blast. So are you saying we should never produce nuclear energy? No, the United States actually takes its devastating powers and converts it to electricity for everyday use. Are there any other disadvantages, though? The byproducts are highly radioactive and there are a slight chance of nuclear explosions due to malpractice destroying its surroundings. Well, we're running out of time. Thank you for being here, Ms. Dr. Fusion. No problem. It was very exciting. Now let's take it over to Evan Baxter with sports. Evan? So, starting with hockey. In a playoff game between the Blackhawks and the Sabres, the Blackhawks beat the Sabres 8-1, to and things just got uglier when, in the third period when there was a lot of fusion between the two teams. Let's check out the footage. These players get famous pretty quickly, and it's pretty easy for them to get hot air in their heads. These guys apparently had so much that they became light enough to become hydrogen atoms. If it had been 2 billion degrees hotter, these guys would have formed helium faster than you can say a word. Thank you, Evan. Well, that's all we have for you tonight.